Hey everybody, it's Mark Taylor Canfield in Seattle. So you'll notice in my videos that uh, although everyone else says, hey guys, <laughs> every me every video I see on YouTube says, starts with, hey guys, I'm not going to do that. So I always say, hey everybody. So I have a little song for you and then I want to talk to you about an issue that's very important to me as Executive Director for Democracy Watch News and that is press freedom. But I'm going to start with this little song for people trying to oppress other people around the world. Hey, Mr. Boss Man, won't you hear us when we call? I said, now, Mr. Boss Man, won't you hear us when we call? Said now you ain't so big now. You just talk, that's all. Okay, so that's all. That's for all you big boss men out there. Anyway, uh, I wanted to talk to you today about press freedom because this is something that I've been actually. Uh, briefing the staff for a member of Congress, uh, Pramila Jayapal, about, and I think it's a really, really important issue that no one in the United States, uh, especially in the media, but also in the political realm, is talking about. And it should be talked about because it's a real challenge here. Even though we're the uh, country that has the First Amendment, uh, which guarantees freedom of the press, uh, independent media especially really suffers in the United States so I'm not sure you can really call it free when at least one major network out there and probably more are doing nothing but telling you lies and uh, I think that's Fox I'm talking about and uh, it's a right-wing propaganda machine um, and you know there's other media that's that's very corporate controlled and monopolized by corporate interests so they're not necessarily going to tell you the truth all the time either but the topic of my briefing for the member of Congress, uh, who, who is a very gracious member of Congress, by the way, Pramila Jayapal. I've known her since uh, I met her when she was an immigrants' rights activist on the streets in Seattle. Um, I've known her for a long time, and she's always had an open door to members of the community and really wants to represent her constituents. So I brought her this uh, briefing about the decline of the U.S. ranking on the World Press Freedom Index by Reporters Without Borders and about challenges to press freedom in general which uh, is also about you know threats to democracy in our culture and our society so my goal was to provide what I consider to be very important information about the, dec the decline of press freedom in the United States and then to try to suggest some possible legislative and public policy remedies. Um, and yes, even though I'm a, a rock and roll singer and uh, play guitar, um, I actually am a very serious activist when it comes to press freedom um, and and for the rights of journalism and journalists in general. So. Um, that's another thing that I'll talk about on a future video is why we need a journalist bill of rights because it's really not fair for uh, magazines and newspapers to websites to sit on your uh, article and not respond to you until it's too late for you to get it published somewhere else that's basically uh, monopolizing your proprietary rights there and then you know stealing work or not stealing work from you but um, keeping you from getting other work so that has to be stopped now the nation magazine luckily their submission guidelines have begun to pay attention to some of those issues and i really applaud them for that although they still aren't talking about press freedom the way they should so shame on you over there i've talked to a senior editor and they're, they're still not reporting on the fact that the united states is ranked 42nd in the world in terms of press freedom by reporters without borders and that's an issue that nobody is talking about no members of congress nobody at the white house um, but Anthony Blinken, our Secretary of State, is going to be speaking at a very important event on May 3rd, which is designated as World Press Freedom Day by the United Nations. 
and there are, there will be major international conferences happening at the United Nations in New York City that day um, and I'm registered for an event that Anthony Blinken will be speaking at and it is uh, sponsored by Reporters Without Borders that's one of the major sponsors because Reporters Without Borders will be releasing their new rankings on the World Press Freedom Index for the year 2023 now in the year 2022 the United States was ranked 42nd behind three of its summit for democracy co-host nations that included um, Zambia Costa Rica and the Netherlands so nobody talked about that of course but the United States is actually ranked behind those nations um, Costa Rica Zambia and the Netherlands um, be being considered by reporters without without borders countries that uh, protect um, press freedom more than the United States so we do have these major media monopolies and and so as part of my briefing what I wanted to do was talk about the problem of course the fact that the media itself is not being held accountable and is not holding itself accountable for lack of reporting on this issue um, and then try to uh, brainstorm about some legis potential legislative or uh, public policy remedies uh, because the corporate media consolidation ownership consolidation the media monopolies have been uh, allowed by the FCC which is the Federal Communications Commission and it's supposedly their job to protect the public airways for the public and they're not doing a very good job of that they're actually kowtowing to um, corporations corporate interests and uh, network owners and the association for you know national association of broadcasters things like that so and ABD so um, I remember when uh, one of their conferences um, the NAB in Seattle people put up posters uh, and I happen to know who these people were because one of them was me um, put up posters around the convention center the Washington State Convention Center where they were holding the NAB national conference with uh, we put up posters saying free the media and some of them said uh, um, ban the corporate media and things like that so um, and they were you know they were meant to be memes to get people thinking they weren't necessarily political slogans but those posters were taken down every day by um, by employees of the Washington State Convention Center they would send uh, working people out there to tear them down um, facility management would order that uh, every day we would go put them up really early in the morning before you know they showed up and as soon as the delegates started showing up then um, they would make they would force uh, these workers to tear those posters down but we made our point and you know there were also there was also a, what they called a mosquito fleet of about 16 I think uh, or at least a dozen uh, uh, kind of outlaw radio stations in the city that day um, broadcasting from everywhere some of the mobile uh, units that could be you know moved from one place to the other because the FCC is always trying to track these uh, illegal pirate broadcasts but one of those people was Mark from Negative Land and he set up a uh, a radio station that whose frequency was right next to KJR which was a music station at the time and so he would pretend that he was KJR you would tune into his station right next to their frequency and you, and Mark would be on there from Negative Land would be saying uh, you are listening to KJR greatest hits of the 80s and 90s and you know and they would start playing journey but then they would cut in with some kind of political statement or something so after a while you would figure out wait this isn't KJR but anyway um, KJR is now a sports station a lot of news stations already and music stations became sports stations since then in Seattle but that's the background on that but the NAB also pressures the FCC to allow corporate media ownership so what it amounts to is you have companies like uh, iHeartMedia which used to be called uh, Clear Channel um, they own 850 radio stations I believe around the country so they claim to have an audience of like 250 million people 
So that's a major monopoly on radio for sure. The next closest is another big monopoly called Cumulus Media. And they own 404 radio stations, according to their own website, around the world. And they brag about um, having, I think, like 1,600 affiliates through Westwood One. And, you know, we're talking about major, major corporate monopolies where these companies own thousands of stations. Uh, Fox owns a lot of stations around the country, uh, like, uh, you know, they are in 17 different markets. I know that they, they dominate 17 uh, national markets. They also uh, have about, I think, s they also have like 2,200 or something or 1,600 uh, affiliates, 2,200, I think. So, you know, crazy. The, you know, Fox is the number one rated, uh, the, the number one um, watched news network in the country and that's really frightening considering some of the things that comes out of that state uh, out of that network so that's one of the reasons why the reporters without borders has been dropping us on the world press freedom index rankings since 2002 we've had a steady decline from number 17 in 2002 to 42nd in 2022 so uh, in 20 years we've dropped uh 30 almost 30 points so it's it's crazy it's not a good situation and the decline has been pretty steady with a few corrections along the way but definitely during the trump administration with his hatred of the press um uh press freedom in the united states was considered uh uh de decli declining because it became actually not very popular to be a journalist because of the the propaganda going on about the media so um, as a U.S. journalist, I am not proud of the fact that there are 41 other nations where there is more press freedom than the United States. I just have to say that straight out. Um, uh, it's embarrassing for me when I uh, deal with international uh, foreign journalists and then, you know, I have to tell them that we're ranked 42nd on the World Press Freedom Index, especially since we are the ones who are pushing through Joe Biden, the president, um, the Summit for Democracy, which is also controversial in its own right, even though I attended, I uh, participated in a meeting uh, at The Hague in the Netherlands that um, was, a, was one of the official Summit for Democracy events on the viability of independent media which is not viable actually in the United States because it's, you know, the airwaves are owned by corporate media monopolies who have millions of dollars to spend on advertising where in independent media has zero, you know, zero. Like they rely on volunteers a lot of the time. So I know I'm president, I'm a, excuse me, vice president and CEO of Democracy Watch News, which is a nonprofit news organization. So I'm very familiar with these issues. And I've also participated in a lot of international conferences and national conferences on journalism and democracy and especially press freedom dealing with these issues. Uh, so I have a well-rounded view on the, on the problem. Uh, the first problem is that the U.S. news refuses to cover our declining ranking. And that's so because no one is reporting on it and no members of Congress are speaking out about the issue, no efforts are being made to address it. Uh, members of Congress don't even know that the World Press Freedom in, uh, Index exists. So I spend most of my time as Executive Director for Democracy Watch News trying to brief news organizations, public officials, and influencers about the current challenges to press freedom in the U.S., but there's very little interest in the subject. I think the corporate-dominated media outlets keep people uninformed on purpose on these issues and they sort of lull folks into a false sense of security and therefore complacency. Um, it's not a comfort, it's not comfortable for a corporate news organization or even so-called progressive or, or public media to report on the fact that the United States is 42nd on the World Press Freedom Index list, uh, meaning that you know we're number 42nd in terms of press freedom because that sort of undermines your own credibility as a news organization when you say that if you're in the United States okay I think that's one of the reasons uh, why it doesn't get coverage in the, by the media here it's like they don't want to look at their own dirty laundry so to speak they don't want to report on their own failings 
and that just contributes to the problem of course so um, as far as I know I'm one of the only national journals journalists even covering these issues on a consistent basis so uh, covering press freedom issues or covering specifically the World Press Freedom Index and our declining ranking is not a story that you're going to hear uh, anywhere else that I know of. Um, nobody seems to be talking about it. Now I have been given certain opportunities like that conference at The Hague and other uh, national and international conferences to talk about this problem but um, and then you know soon I hope to be giving a presentation on the subject for Progressive Democrats of America for their national town meeting and for our local uh, Democrats in, in the 43rd district in uh, Washington State who seem to be interested in this issue. Now, it's, it's not that I haven't reached out to other parties and other people on this issue, but that I am responding to people who, who show interest and want to hear about it. In general, um, only international NGOs and members of the foreign press have been willing to give me a voice on this matter and offer me opportunities to speak out. So. On March 30th, I was invited to present my information during a Summit for Democracy event at The Hague, which I mentioned. That event was sponsored by the Global Forum for Media Development and UNESCO, who were both trying to, to help um, fund or find ways of funding uh, independent media. Uh, I am very curious, of course, whether the United States media will report on the event scheduled for May 3rd on World Press Freedom Day this year when Reporters Without Borders will release its new rankings for the 2023 World Press Freedom Index. If the United States states, if the United States drops on that list again, which I expect to happen, um, I wonder if they'll even report on it. I sort of think not, and I doubt maybe... I, de I, I, I sort of expect uh, that Secretary of State Blinken will not even mention that during his address. That's just the way that uh, the United States deals with it. They ignore it. Um, one of the reasons that I expect the U.S. ranking to decline again is because of the continuing media monopolies, which I've already mentioned. And also, let's face it, Elon Musk's interference and attempts at censorship at Twitter, where, you know, he l l seems to, you know, enjoy Donald Trump's lies, but um, bans other people in, in his obviously you know trying to block messages about Substack so um, then there's all also the obvious right-wing lies coming out of Fox News about the 2020 election and the insurrection in Washington DC so a press that is severely compromised and actively lies to the public is also not a free press regardless of whether that censorship and propaganda is coming from a state-run media or a corporate-run media that's one thing that people miss in the United States. They think of countries with issues about, you know, challenges to press freedom as being uh, countries like China or Russia, uh, where there's state-controlled media. But it also happens in places where there's a corporate-controlled or a theocracy or re religious-controlled media. So, luckily, at a town hall event in March, in response to my question about press freedom, Congresswoman Jim, uh, Pramila Jayapal talked about the power of media monopolies to shut out the voices of independent media who are severely underfunded and usually lack any kind of advertising budget at all. So except for a few rare examples, uh, such as the group called Documented in New York City who focus on news that affects immigrants and immigration rights specifically, uh, other than that most nonprofit and publicly funded news organizations founded by POC and native journalists are not economically viable for the most part in US media markets because there's just no funding for it and nobody has been able to come up with uh, work workable economic business plans um, to, to fund and sustain these organizations meanwhile of course corporate and right-wing media monopolies are able to dominate the airwaves so it becomes a political issue as well uh, Clear Channel, which is now called iHeart Media, as I mentioned, actually owns 855 radio stations across the country. Um, Cumulus reports that it owns 404 stations in 85 markets, actually, and has listeners at 9,400 affiliate stations. So it's even worse than I mentioned before, and that's that's through their Westwood One network. So no independent or locally owned me radio station can compete effectively with those kinds of monopolies. 
Te television stations are also dominated by corporate monopolies. Fox owns 28 TV stations in 17 markets and has 2,200 affiliates. And as I said, the FCC is in large part responsible for allowing media monopolies because until media monopolies are broken up as part of antitrust initiatives and effective legislation, these corporate interests are going to continue to dominate the media landscape. So I actually testified before the Federal Communications Commission on the negative effects of corporate media ownership. Um, but the FCC commissioners claim to have no knowledge of the studies uh, that the FCC itself had commissioned at several major universities showing these negative uh, effects including uh, less local news media coverage, less POC and female ownership of the media. Uh, the professors that I interviewed told me that they would never accept another commission from the FCC because their academic research had been suppressed. It became a very uh, controversial issue. And I wrote about that at Truth Out and reported on the situation for the Pacifica Radio Network and for Free Speech Radio News, where I, I worked as a journalist. So one day, uh, the U.S. media is going to have to start to address the declining uh, ranking that we have in the world stage. Um, and one way to do that is to dismantle the powerful media monopolies who dominate the industry and keep independent media from flourishing. You know, it would be really helpful if the FCC would just stop allowing more corporate media consolidation. There's already so much. Uh, pretty soon there's only going to be a couple companies that own all of our media and that's kind of frightening that that's not diversity and democracy requires a diverse uh, editor diverse editorial points of view um, but even uh, trying to stop the media monopolies is not in itself enough to allow indie media to thrive because there's no visible or viable models for sustaining most independent media groups they need funding so communities, along with local and national government uh, and nonprofits and foundations must, and academic institutions must subsidize this important work of independent media in the United States. So thank you for sticking with me through this video. It's a very important issue, so I appreciate you paying attention. Uh, most people are not talking about it. 
Um, there are, as I was saying, other potential public policy and legislative remedies to the loss of freedom of the press in the United States, but bottom line, if the United States wants to continue to be considered a, quote, leader, unquote, in the spread and support of democratic institutions, then of course it must first face its own declining ranking on the World Press Freedom Index by Reporters Without Borders. Unfortunately, no U.S. news organization seems to want to report on this issue, and as Executive Director for Democracy Watch News, a nonprofit organization that uh, covers challenges to, to democracy around the world, including in the United States, I am very disappointed by the lack of accountability on the part of U.S. news media and political representatives on this issue. I'm constantly lobbying major news media networks to report on the steady decline in the U.S. ranking since 2002, when we were ranked uh, 17th in the world in terms of press freedom. But now we're ranked number 42nd, and our organization's demands for accountability and coverage of press freedom issues in the United States are largely ignored. In fact, almost completely ignored. So thank you for not ignoring us completely today and actually listening to what I had to say. This is the same thing that I've been trying to tell members of Congress and been talking about on different national media programs, including the Jeff Santos Show, where I'm a guest every Thursday now, um, talking about press freedom and also the music scene and things happening in Seattle and the rest of the country on that, uh, on the music scene, because I, I do perform and have a band and do rock music, including and also other music. I also play classical and jazz and other stuff, but right now I'm concentrating on my rock stuff, which you can find on Spotify and Pandora and iTunes and Apple Music and all that. Um, and uh, check out as I, my video at YouTube called Mother Freedom. It's a music video dedicated to people fighting for justice and freedom around the world. Please go ahead, go down there and click on the like button, as they say in all these videos. Um, subscribe. Give me a thumbs up if you appreciate what we're talking about here. And uh, thank you for listening. I really appreciate your time. I know uh, everybody's busy and there's a lot going on in the world, but uh, these issues, I think, are really super important. And if we can just get a few people to start thinking about them, and maybe a few mem key members of Congress and a few key members of the press, uh, including Amy Goodman at Democracy Watch News, and, hey, where's Rachel Maddow on this? I actually did contact her and her uh, producer about this stuff. Um, if we can get a few people out there talking about it, maybe people will wake up a little bit and press freedom will actually become as important to people in the United States as what's happening lately with the, the Kardashians. That would be really nice. So this is Mark Taylor Canfield uh, for the MTC Report here in Seattle. I want to thank you for joining us. And as I said, please subscribe. I really appreciate your support.